to crossplay our video game podcast here at the Whatnots. It is Saturday, March 5th, 2022. This is number 110. And coming up on today's show, a brand new Pokemon generation has been announced. Bandcamp has been bought up by Epic Games and pretty much everyone in the games industry is halting sales of their games in Russia. Lots of stuff to talk about this week, yep. uh, but we'll get to all that in just a bit. My name is Kyle Springer, and I am joined by Ignacio Rojas. Hello. Ignacio, what have uh, you been up to this week? Oof, not much, really. Uh, it's my last week of vacation over here, so I've been trying to squeeze every last drop that I can from, from this week. So the only important thing that I did was that I took my car to the... Uh, what do you call it? When you to a checkup, sure. Yeah. I, don't I don't know if that's the word that you use. So I did that, and that's basically the most I've done this week. What kind of car do you ha- have? Uh, Ford Focus. Ford Focus. I I feel yeah. like I asked you that recently. I don't think so. It it, it slipped my mind. Maybe I, I don't think so. Maybe. Who well, knows? if you did, I also forget. So. I, I don't have a car. Uh, I don't even have my license, technically. Um, so have you ever I've, had one? Have I a license at least? No, but I've owned a car. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> it was so I it was in high school. I was with my dad. We were supposed to help someone move into a new apartment. Uh, we went there on the wrong day. And uh, we were driving back and in the parking lot of this Walmart that we were passing, I saw this car and it it was like at the age of of like, okay, like I need to be getting my 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 permit real soon, soon here. And I decided to steal things. Right. Exactly. (laughs) They never caught me. Um, But. It, it was it was at that age where like I should be getting my permit. I hadn't yet. There were one or two, two things that just delayed it. Um, and but I like I saw this car and it was one of those things where I like I screeched. I was like, ah, Dad, stop, stop! Oh my God, stop! Um, and wow. and we like <laughs> my, my 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 dad stopped. We went and we looked at this car. It was a 79 Dodge a- 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 Aspen. 79. 79 Dodge Aspen. Uh, the year of that model was a muscle car. Oh, yeah. uh, oh, yeah. Like they, they, they changed up the model in years past that, but that one specific year was a muscle car and it looked sweet. It was red with two black racing stripes and it had a for sale sign in the window. And I was like, yeah. that's the one that I want. Um, man, it, it, it had like 96 Mustang bucket seats on the inside. It had a slap shifter for racing. It had a like a racing steering wheel. It had aftermarket uh, like speakers and it and stuff. It had racing tires and rims. Yeah. And we got it for like two thousand dollars like dirt cheap like it was a steal yeah um yeah and it was because someone like the owner of the car i think their son was moving to go to school at virginia tech and they needed cash like really fast for something so they Mm -hmm. they were just like we we need to get rid of this that's why it's ridiculously cheap uh and yeah that's the car that I bought and my first job, most of my checks just went straight back to my parents okay. who actually bought it at, at first, okay. but I paid them back and g- g- got it after that. Uh, so you thought, it was supposed you to thought be, okay, it was supposed thought, to be okay, I, I got the I got the car. That's it. That's the one item in the checklist. All I need is a car. It was so the, the like it was supposed supposed to be motivation for like man i have this fucking sweet ass car i am gonna get laid so much it's gonna be great uh and like i just one thing after another i just never got my 
permit. Um, long story short, it, it was like, um, well, uh, well the, 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 the main thing is that at one po po point I was ready to go. I, I studied like I was about to take the test the night before my parents came in to like they came in to talk with me and was like, so we lost your birth certificate. Um, so and technically you don't exist right now, so you don't have enough ID to go take the test. Good news wow. is we know it's somewhere in the house, <laughs> but we can't find it right now. <laughs> wow. Um, so wait, so a you needed a birth certificate to get a license and B couldn't you get another one? I well, that's the thing. We we could have like we we had one in the house somewhere. It had just gotten mixed up with a bunch of papers or who knows what they found it like six months later. But that means like my plans to get my permit were de delayed by like six yeah, I, I, months. I guess if yeah, and, if it's and next then, day. Right. Yeah. And and then and then like I then I had all my AP tests and stuff like that in high school. Uh, and then it was like, well, and then I'm I'm going to be gone all summer and then this and then that. And, and one thing after another, I just never got it. And eventually the car got moved down to Richmond where I or I, or I, 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 I am right now and where I went to school. Uh, but uh, I ran out of money and had to move away. Uh, and so I tried to sell my car uh, and I couldn't find someone to buy it. Oh, yeah. So I had to junk it, which really sucks. I got 500 yeah. bucks and they just destroyed this beautiful car. Uh, and I'm uh, so mad and I hate myself. Wow. So, <laughs> wow. Yeah, yeah, that's that's my. Uh, long ass story about <laughs> why i don't have my <laughs> license or car <laughs> yeah it's the it's the shame of my household <laughs> <laughs> good stuff good stuff um well let's let's start talking about some video games here let's get sure. into what we've been playing <laughs> I, I i did the thing where i i didn't hit the jingle button before we went live, so it came up on screen all shaky. It's not supposed to do that. Let me see if I can play it one more. That's what it's oh, yeah. supposed to look like. There we go. Yeah. Okay, okay. Um, Ignacio, Yo. talk to me. What have uh, you been playing? What have I been playing? Was I here last week? No, it wasn't, right? You were not. Yeah, uh, uh, yeah, I wasn't here. I had things to do. Uh, so first up, an update to Horizon Forbidden West. I beat Horizon Forbidden West. Ooh, it's a game. That much <laughs> I can say. It's a game. <laughs> you heard it here first, folks. It's a yeah. I, I don't know. I I beat it in uh, like a okay. So I. It took me like a couple of days to get it halfway through. I would say maybe four days, five days. I don't know. Because I, I ended up playing like an hour or so every time that I played. Mm -hmm. And then by the time that I got like halfway through and Elden Ring came out and everyone was starting to talk about Elden Ring, I decided, okay, today I'm going to dedicate several hours to playing this game because I know that if I golden path it, it's not that long. It's like nine hours long, golden pathing. So I did that. I did it in two days, the second half. I managed to play it. And I gotta say, the game is good. There is an interesting story in there. I don't know why it never actually grabbed me. Like, I, it was entertaining. Mm. I didn't have a bad time playing any of it. But it was never something that I was looking forward to. It was nothing that I was really excited to play, to experience. I don't know why. It was a similar thing with Horizon 1, where I cannot tell you much about the story of Horizon 1. Because I played the game. I remember enjoying the game. Then when Breath of the Wild came out, I 
dropped it quickly. Yeah. yeah. So pff, later that year, I went back to Horizon and I ended up beating it. Uh, what I had left. And then that second half, the second half of my playthrough, I cannot tell you what it was, uh, what happened, pretty much. Well, that that and s- I- second half of that first game is so like lore he- heavy. Yeah. Like, if if you had a big gap in there and you didn't re- like really remember exactly what was happening or like why it was happening the way it was, I can see how that would be confusing or um. Because I, 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 I stuck with that that one, but I also like it just it threw so much at you that it was almost a little bit too much to comprehend. Yeah, but I remember it. I, I liked what I can remember of the lore I of Horizon. It, yeah, like what happened? There, there was a mystery of what happened to the to the previous civilization. Why are there robots, dinosaurs <laughs> roaming around these machines? roaming like, around yeah. i thought that, that mystery was very interesting and then i think that that was one of the most appealing parts of horizon uh, zero dawn now that you get to horizon forbidden west they still try to have some mystery in there with the with the introduction of the antagonists uh mm-hmm. like halfway through the game and when that happened i did get a bit of uh like oh now i'm engaged a bit more with the story than figuring yeah. out what's happening with the world but even then again it, it is a fine game it was entertaining for what for what i played it yeah but it never grabbed me i don't know why and uh that's a very interesting comparison when you compare it to the next game that i played which is elden ring so before we get on to that, let me at least say, yeah, I, I, I think when the introduction of those specific antagonists happened in the game, like that is when I started to set up. I was like, oh, this is kind of cool. I like this. Let's go more with that. And I'm not done with the game yet. I'm almost there. I think I have like four of the main missions left. So I'm like right there at, at, at the end. Uh, they haven't done much with them with those antagonists yeah. that I'm, I'm just like i it's it's either gonna kind of fall apart or it's gonna be like what they did at the at, with, with the first game where there's just like all of this info and lower dump right at the end pretty um, much kind of yeah so I, I yeah i'm i'm right there so i can see how it, it could be just like yeah more of the same more of the first one I liked it. It's good, right? But it's it's just yeah. not. It's good. I don't have any real problems with the game. I think uh, it could very easily be in my mind like an eight. Sure. Yeah. But uh, I don't know. It's maybe it's missing that spark that keeps me going. I, I don't know. But uh, sure. yeah, it is a good game. It never grabbed me. And the open world. That's the other thing. Again. I'll do the comparison later to Elden Ring, but I was never actually com- compelled to explore the world uh, for sure. me to the point that I, when I decided to golden path it, I decided to not even bother with getting the tall oh, I just okay. went because I have the waypoint, so I'll follow the waypoint. So even if the map is all covered in mist, it doesn't matter because I have my waypoint pointing me on the right direction because i just i just felt like what the things that you find are not that interesting yeah i can see that i i feel like their open world excuse me choking to death here um <laughs> i i can see like i i feel like their open world is really like tight and narrow down if that makes sense like i don't feel like it's as egregious as in assassin's creed with like you can do so much stuff and there's a dot here and a dot there and a thing Mm -hmm. here and a thing there but i think they are very specific like there is a story back here there is a thing here you can go do that on there but it's it's yeah there's just not as much so i i kind of understand that 
too. Like I am still getting the tall necks, but the tall necks don't really lift the fog up. It just p puts the uh, the qu question marks and all of that that stuff. It reveals what those are on top of the fog. Mm -hmm. And so if it's stuff of like, well, I don't really need to go to this like, yeah, like I, I don't need another back location, right? Like yeah, I don't I, need another herd of these machines. Yeah, I, I don't need to go that way. So, I, yeah, that that makes sense. That makes sense. Yeah. Talk to me about Elden Ring. Oh, boy. So, uh, like I said, Elden, that's Elden Ring Horizon. It took me like nine hours to play it, and that was scattered around like what like five six seven game sessions okay i'm at 20 hours with elden ring according to the game clock and that's like three four game sessions so that goes to tell you how engaged i'm with elden ring so i i'm not a souls person because i never really played sure. them the most that i had played them was jedi for an order which i loved and neo which I gave it a try and it never grabbed me. And so I came into Elden Ring not being a uh, Souls guy, not really experiencing much of it. And man, it grabbed me. I don't know what it is, but it grabbed me in, a way, that, in a way that it reminds me a lot of, of Breath of the Wild. And I know a lot of people have made the comparison to Breath of the Wild, but that it is true. Comparing it, Again, com making the comparison to Horizon Forbidden West, where I never felt compelled to explore the world. With Elden Ring is the opposite, where I'm in the castle, I'm, I know that I have to go through this dungeon, but hey, I just want to go explore right now all these sure. other places, see what I can find, see if I can find any new weapon or any new upgrade. And I've explored a lot of the world like that, not knowing really exactly where, it go where to go. The game doesn't tell you really where to go. What's the path? You can kind of figure out where the path is because if you look at the map, there are kind of like arrows pointing you in a certain direction. Mm -hmm. But even then, I, I'm not so, I like when a game tells me where to go. And this game doesn't do that. And even still, I'm very compelled to just do whatever find out where i where i can find i know that i like this weapon so hey i'm gonna go on on google to figure out how to upgrade it okay you have to go to this one cave and you get need to get this one thing from this one boss okay that thing is so far away in the map i've never seen it but hey i'll just make the journey there i'll see all these new places i'll, I'll do the journey then i'll get to the dungeon i go through the dungeon I the boss can kill me five, ten times. I don't care. I feel like I can do this. Yeah. I like the challenge. I know I can take it. And guess what? I end up taking it. I ended up beating the boss. And like that, I keep going and I keep going to the point that I've played for <laughs> yesterday must have been over five hours. Like cool. five continuous hours. And the day before that was something similar to that. And yeah. time just passes by so fast. And I, again, like I said before with Horizon, I don't know why the game isn't grabbing me. When I stop and think about Elden Ring, I don't know how it is grabbing me this much. <laughs> I don't know how. Like I said, I, I'm someone that doesn't like it when, when you just go do whatever and we're not going to tell you. I do not like that. And I'm someone that, for example, Caphead, Cuphead is very challenging. Cuphead, sure. I stopped at one point because I knew that it, even if I kept going and going, it just isn't fun to just keep banging your head against the wall until it breaks at some point. That's not the case with Elden Ring, where I keep going and going, and I beat the boss, and then I go to the next one, and I keep going and going, and they kill me. I lose my runes. I have to do it again. They kill me again. I keep going, and I keep going. I, at no I point, I'm any discouraged to keep going. I, I wonder if it's because you have the option to like, hey, if you do feel like a boss is too hard, you can just go do something else. Yeah, like, it's not like you're stuck here. And it's like, well, if I don't beat this one particular bad guy, then that's it. I yeah, can't move I, forward. For example, 
one of the first proper bosses that you fight in the game. A lot of people have been having problem, problems with that boss to the mm -hmm. point that even Trevor Noah made a joke about him in, in The Daily Show the other day. Yeah. <laughs> and so I, I went, I keep getting my ass kicked and I keep getting killed and killed and killed. And I, I, after a few tries, I just said, I'll just go explore the world. If I can get runes, I can level up. So I'm gonna kill. I'm gonna go kill monsters, get runes, level up. Okay, I think I'm good now. I'll go back to the boss once again. It keeps killing me and killing me once uh, for several times. Okay, I'll just go back again, explore more of the world, and then I come back. And then after some tries, I end up beating him. That's and yeah, awesome. I do have I do have that option of I'm just gonna go back, take a step back go do something else because one of the good things about the game is that it is open. You can go mm -hmm. do whatever you want. Like Breath of the Wild where you could just go, it tells you there are these four, four missions that you have to go take on, go and do them. Do whatever you want. It is very similar here where, yes, the proper path seems to be you have to go through this boss to get to the castle, do the castle, whatever. Mm -hmm. Or, you could just go around the castle and explore what's behind that castle, find what's over there, go guild people, go find new weapons, get better, and then if you want, or when you want, go back to the, to the boss at the beginning and go and take on the challenge and see if you can beat him beat next, this time. And I think so that's one of the good things about the game. What, cl what class have you been playing as? I forgot the name, but it's basically your typical knight, where I have gotcha. a shield, a sword, regular typical sword, not even a long sword, not even a buster sword, like Gino, I, I know he's using. It's just a regular old sword, and uh, I forget what the class is, but it is basically a knight. And that's okay. because I, I like the... When I came into the game, I wanted the sword and shield uh, gameplay where I, I go hack at the enemy, and then when the enemy attacks me, I block. And so for my character, I've been building out a lot of the stamina meter because mm -hmm. when you block, you use stamina. So if you want to be successfully blocking bosses' attacks, you need a lot of stamina. And if you want to keep slashing and slashing and slashing, every slash, it, it consumes some bit of your stamina. So if you want to keep going and going and going, you need a lot of stamina. And so that's one of the good things about the game is that you can play in so many different ways where, yes, I'm a sword and shield person, whereas, for example, Gino, he uses a bigger sword. Mm -hmm. And so he puts in a lot of this bigger sword. It is super powerful, but it's also super, super slow. And right. he has no way of blocking attacks. There's also the way you can go as a mage where you use magic and range magic attacks. Or you can go the samurai way or all these different other ways. And I, speaking of that, I also like the, that, yes, I'm like a knight type of person, but I also, if I want to, I can spend my, my skill points and level myself up in a way where I can also use spells and incantations. Gotcha. Cool. It's good. I'm yeah. glad you're in, in, enjoying that one. I, I, I have this weird FOMO of the game because I, like, I would love to try it, but I, I also don't want to spend money on the game because I know I won't like it. It's definitely not a game for me. But like I I mean like everyone has been saying this is maybe their most accessible one because it has some of those like well you can just go explore, right? If 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 you don't Yeah, know, I think you know, but I think that's one of the reasons it I, I just well. don't like souls games. Like they're just too obtuse for <laughs> for me so oh well oh i well. think if you were to give it a, a try i think there is a better chance of you liking it that you even you think because going back Probably. to probably again go back to gino i i watched him play yesterday and he if you remember he he stopped playing sifu because it was too challenging and he even said it is his first soul game but he's yeah. loving the game yeah. There's another game. Yeah. Interesting. Interesting yeah. stuff. 
what else have you been playing? Looks like you got one more thing written down here. <laughs> uh, I've been playing this little game called Yu-Gi-Oh! Master Duel. I know a lot of people have been waiting to hear about the how best game of the year so far, right? Yeah, the best game so far, <laughs> Yu-Gi-Oh! Master Duel. So how is it? And believe it or not, it is Yu-Gi-Oh! Oh, I would have never g- 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 guessed. I thought this would have been more like a Pokemon or a Digimon, but wow, surprising that a Yu-Gi-Oh game is like Yu-Gi-Oh. Yeah. No, I think <laughs> even if it, is, it sounds like a joke, I think saying it is a Yu-Gi-Oh game, a Yu-Gi-Oh as Yu-Gi-Oh game is a very good description because... The way that this game works, it isn't like your typical Yu-Gi-Oh game that comes out on, on consoles where you, is, is you this play a like card, like deck builder. Yeah, yeah. Game. Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay. Do you know what Yu-Gi-Oh is? First yeah, of all? I, I have Yu-Gi-Oh cards. I, I just didn't oh, yeah. know like what do you mean oh, by yeah. a Yu-Gi-Oh ass Yu-Gi-Oh game? I've never played a Yu-Gi-Oh I'm game. So I don't know if it's a a a deck builder or if it's like a I'm third person there. action platformer riding on the back of your blue eyes white dragon and dark magician and stuff like I'm that i'm getting there <laughs> i'm getting there so what i mean is that you have your typical Yu-Gi-Oh games that for example you play through the Yu-Gi-Oh series and you get to play as yugi and you have his deck and you go through predetermined bosses based on the on the show this is different from that because it is very much a uh, digital version of the trading of a trading card game or the trading okay, card game cool. in a way where you can build your deck however you like so it is, it is very much the game is very much you playing against other people that's it that's the basic gist of it and you you can you against the game is very good or against uh no people against people online people online Okay, so the cool. game is very much that. It is very much you playing against others. And one good thing about this game is that it allows you very much to play, to build the deck as, as you want. The game gives you a deck at the beginning of the game for you to try it out and whatever. But the good thing about the game is that depending on the rarity of the cards, you can, ha- you can get a certain type of currency that allows you to mm-hmm. pretty much make or get any card that you want. So for example, if you know the deck that you want, you, even if you have your childhood deck that you once had, the game is very good at allowing you to de- build the deck that you want with the cards that you want. It is very good at that. And it also, it is the typical, hey, you have this currency, you can, build, you can buy boosters back and get the, the deck that you want that way. Gotcha. That's pretty much the gist of it. I, I don't know what else to say. I love Yu-Gi-Oh! And what I like about this game is that it is free to play. It is cross-save. And even if it has microtransactions, I have the deck that I want. And I can okay. build more decks that I want. And I've never paid any money for anything. Yeah. And, and I can play with... Made by with Konami. People. That, that yeah. pachinko machine <laughs> company. Yeah. The only bad thing that I can say about the game is that it does a terrible job of, uh, of matching you with people of your same level to the point that it is okay. ridiculous going... I'm, I'm someone who played as a kid on school. I played uh, with my friends and we, we had our rules and whatever. It is so ridiculous to come here so many years later and so many... So many times that I played, the opponent can be in his first turn and he already has three, four monsters that are that have like 2,000, 3,000 points. And I have no idea how to do that. I have my blue eyes and I have my other dragons and I build my deck as a dragon. You're not a master yet. You're you're not a master dueler. I have my Egyptian god cards, but they steal it. Yeah. Those are the days. But yeah, that's that's a game. If you like Yu-Gi-Oh, this is a very good game to cool. play Yu-Gi-Oh the way that you want. Good stuff. Ignacio, I have been playing Triangle Strategy. 
Triangle square. Triangle square. Push square. Um, hit A. <laughs> that, that's that's going to be their, their, next, their, their, their next game. Project hit the A button. And, and they're yep. going to be like, okay, now we're, gonna get, we're about to announce the brand new title of Project Hit the A Button. The game is called Hit the A Button. <laughs> I'm going to... I'm going to make a prediction here. I'm going to bet that the next game, the title has in some shape, in some form, circle. There's going to be a circle somewhere, like even around something or a circle this or whatever. I'm going to bet here that circle is going to be there in some form. Okay, okay. Project Round Table or something yeah. like that. And it's like an Arthurian Knights RPG, uh, yeah. something like that would be... How is it? Interesting. Uh, so game? yeah, I'm I'm really only about three hours into the game so far, so I'm not very is this, far. Is this a game proper here. or is it the demo? Yes, the this is out? the game proper. The game is out. Yeah, um, uh... came out yesterday. So um, I I'm not very far in right now. I think the demo covered the first three chapters i'm only like i'm almost done with that second chapter so there's not not I'd like basically i've played the demo <laughs> um i i'm i got sold on this game when they released their first demo like a year and a half ago ish like a year ago ish i don't remember when it was exactly uh but i played that and was like i lo love this this is fantastic um and so yeah i'm playing now played about three hours and right now i'm torn i i think it's off to a terribly slow start wow like it's it's ridiculous how slow this is i've fought one battle that took maybe about 30 to 40 minutes because they were tutorializing you right Wow. And uh, the rest has been dialogue for like two and a half hours. <laughs> um, so okay. yeah, it, 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 okay. it is hit the A button to just like go to the next yeah. d -d 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 dialogue thing. Um, but of what I know of the gameplay, I really do like the actual gameplay. Um, I... <sighs> Final Fantasy Tactics Advanced is one of my favorite games of all time. Uh, and if you liked that game, if you, you like tactics, if you like tactics, uh, that game is, is, is one that I would say, if you guys like that stuff, play this, um, this will be up your alley. But despite the really, really slow start, um, the stuff I've been reading about this is that this is a long ass game. It's like 40 or 50 hours to Jesus. Complete. Um, if yeah, d just depending on how many side quests you do and stuff like that. Um, and it has multiple endings. It has all. So it, it's it's like depending on what you do and what you say to certain characters it seems like it can have some really big consequences um and i'm excited for that and if you want to go in and explore those multiple endings and stuff you yeah you're gonna have to play like a hundred something hours to like find all of the content in this so i'm excited for stuff like that i think this will be a game that i'm playing the, probably for the rest of the year <laughs> if i'm being honest um but uh yeah I, i'm like right now i'm just torn because i haven't re really gotten to see much but the story has kept me fascinated the, the story is interesting i think they're doing a good job of like setting up the characters setting up the lore so that you really do care about them and when decisions get made or you say a certain thing and it goes wrong you're just like oh fuck like no this is not what i want to have happen uh and yeah I, I think i think characters that maybe start out as bad guys might end up becoming your friends down the road or ones that start out as your friends 
might uh might not stay friends the whole time um so yeah i'm 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 still super excited about this game but i still have to go finish horizon uh so probably not gonna get too much farther in in the this one this next week so i want to uh focus on beating horizon first so but, but do you see yourself sticking through the 40 hours or whatever it yes. takes, even if it is absolutely, the year. absolutely, yeah. Um, I I think if you're into the like Game of Thrones style, like political intrigue and different factions and all the, all that stuff, if you're like I I think F Fire Emblem, if if you're a fan of of the recent Fire Emblem games, you'll like this one too. So. Good well, stuff, but also, yeah. God, it just, it's taking forever. <laughs> it's <laughs> good, but it's so slow. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, that's what I've been up to, up to, up to this week. Um, have not gotten to play much else besides that. So but there you go. Uh, with that, we will take a quick break for housekeeping, and then we will get into some of the news. So we will be right back. And we are back. A big shout out to our Patreon supporters, especially those at the $5 tier. So thank you to Sam. Uh, we appreciate you. We love you a lot. Thank you for supporting us. It means a ton. Thank you. Um, cool things that we've been up to here at the Whatnots. Let's see. This week on the review show, we are reading Batman Court of Owls. Uh, oh. To go in conjunction with the new Batman movie uh, that is out this weekend as well. Uh, have 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 you by ch by chance seen the Batman yet, Ignacio? I have seen the Batman. There you I go. Thumbs up. Thumbs down. Thumbs, thumbs down. Thumbs middle. Thumb, thumb. Oh. Thumbs up. Hell yeah! Yep. I loved it. Um, we will be recording a spoiler cast on the Batman probably tomorrow. I think is that's kind of our only day to record it, I think. Um, but yes, be on the lookout for that on the reactor core. Uh, and then on the captain's log, Melissa wanted me to challenge her with some Riddler riddles. Uh, so okay. I, I, I got a series of riddles that the Riddler said in the comics, in the TV shows, in the cartoons, all, all, oh, yeah. all that stuff. And I challenged her with them to see nice. if she could solve, solve them. Uh, and she she did. OK, she did decent. Oh, yeah. So good, good stuff on that. Uh, but yeah, that is about it for housekeeping. So, Ignacio, let's get into the news. Item zero, Digimon <laughs> Con news. What is this? <laughs> uh, so we talked about it, I think, two weeks ago, where I mentioned how last week there was going to be a Digimon Con and that there was a good chance that we were going to get news about games. So Digimon Con happened last Saturday after, uh, they, after Crossway had already finished. Yeah. Uh, the, the 
Con itself went up for a while. It was pretty long. And they had several things where it started with games and then when it went to anime and the TCG and whatever. Sure. But this is a game podcast, so I'll just limit myself to speaking about the game news. So Give it to me. at the beginning, they had one of the, I think it was producers of the Digimon games in general. Mm-hmm. And the way that they did it, it was formatted as a Q&A of, of sorts, where they had questions and they would ask the producer for, for answers. Sure. And it was very interesting how they did it, because it's not like the questions were tailored for something, but rather they just have several questions that even though there, it wasn't going to result in anything of uh, news or whatever, they still had it. For example, they asked several times about, hey, are you going to be remaking the PS1 game? That we make, or are yes, you going to be making another version of this type of game? Or are you going to remake the Wonderstone game? And website, the answer was always, we well, have thought about it, but no, there are no plans for it. Choice. So when you type I thought in that, that was pretty interesting all of our shows that they have that sort of, right that there. kinds of questions. Just don't forget to give us a nice rating uh, and review if you like the shows. As for newsworthy things, I have four bullet points that I got from that. So first up, do that. of course, they have to start it with for as a Digimon Survive blog because get all kinds of the Digimon Survive you didn't know the announcer. You can also Two, get a shout three out years ago, and, and we haven't heard much about it. Our shows so they did address that. Tier. They said that they had you changed can support us on Twitch developers by at one point. To our channel and so that, at that's what caused the delay. The whatnots, and we would love uh, to have you all join us for yeah. our live streams. So and talk that's with us point in the chat. number one. Point and number lastly, two is that we we'll merch. still have to wait if more like to grab for news about the game. They did show a lot of gameplay from the game. Even though they never addressed it as gameplay. It was just the producer speaking and then gameplay going through it. It was a lot of new gameplay. So one of the big things to come out of it is that the producer himself said that the game will be more of a, a text adventure game rather than a, a, like an action game. So okay. he said that it was going to be a combination of text adventure game and taxi, tactics game, but the ratio would be like seven. Seven to three, seven text adventure and three uh, tactics game, gotcha. which for me personally, it, it is disappointing. I would have preferred the, the opposite to be for it to be where seven mm-hmm. gameplay and three the story. I'm not much of a text adventure game, but I'm also excited to see what they do with the world because they, they also went through like what's their mindset, what's their, what's the message that they want to give with these new world that they are building with the game. And then the last news thing that came out of it was that they are developing a new Digimon Story game. It is in development. And I, I know that this will mean nothing to you, but it will be based on the 12 Olympians and it will be set in the Digimon, digital world. There you go. So big news. Big news indeed out of Digimon Con. Good stuff. Cool. Thank you. Nope. Thank you for putting that in there. Well, let's get on to the real news. You know, you know, you know what I mean? The, the stuff that people actually care about here. <laughs> How dare you? How Which dare you? Which is Pokemon you? issue number one or not issue. What the fuck am I talking about? Item number one here on the news. Uh, there was a brand new Pokemon generation announced. Uh, Pokemon Day happened last Sunday. Uh, and they put out a brand new Pokemon Direct with all sorts of announcements. Um, there's a bunch of bullet points here from this one. I am kind of pulling from one of those Pokemon Day roundup, everything announced things from Games Radar. Uh, so Pokemon Go is getting the Alolan Pokedex. Alolan. Alolan? I spelled it wrong yeah. then. Alolan. 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 Right. Yeah, yep, exactly. Cool. Nailed it. Uh, yeah, they're getting a brand new Pokedex uh, in that. So that is exciting. Pokemon Masters EX is getting a bunch of new trainers and challenges and some pretty cool login bonuses. If that is your thing. I, I really don't know what that game is exactly. I feel uh, like it's just 
like fighting a series of trainers. Just but I don't kind of from the little I played of Pokemon Master Six. Uh, it is kind of like a like a mobile version of the gameplay from the games, where if I'm not mistaken, you have three Pokemon for you, and you fight Pokemon, but based on trainers that are known, like okay, trainers yeah, from yeah, the yeah. anime, from the games, chain leaders, and whatever. It's not like you fight cool. random teams or whatever and that's Pokemon as far as I know from the challenges you because you walked in front yeah. of him um, yeah. cool that's yeah there you go next up Pokemon Cafe Remix is getting deliveries new Pokemon and events inspired by Bulbasaur and Piplup a uh, new quick time battle mode in Pokemon Unite Hoopla was available for a limited time. I'm not sure if it's still available or not, because uh, that started last s Sunday. So who knows? Uh, and then they tease that Duraludon is coming in the near future. So more for Pokemon Unite. Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl players will receive Professor Oak's letter as a mystery g gift in the game, allowing you to meet the professor as well as some of the older p p Pokemon and will allow you to catch the mythical grass type Pokemon Shaman. Yeah. So Oak's letter is a thing from the original Diamond and Pearl games. Ah, okay. It is a, a, an event from those games that so they are bringing it back for this game, which I thought it, it was pretty cool that they, it wasn't like, hey, here's Shaming. No, they're calling it Oak's letter, which is from the other game. Gotcha. Good. To know, I would not have known that. And then Arceus is getting a free update called Daybreak, uh, which launches a new investigation into a mysterious phenomenon causing mass outbreaks all over the map, plus a bunch of new Pokemon battles at the training grounds, uh, and you can get 90 free balls uh, by using the code Arceus Adventure all one word and uh games radar had this in all caps i'm not sure if that matters but i think it is it forces all caps cool when you cool, introduce cool. the code good stuff uh nintendo also announced a new online animated series focusing on the hisuai region to release later in 2022 uh which seems to focus on the hisuian Zorua? I don't Sora. know how to pronounce that. Zora. Sora. Sora. Something Sora. like that. Sora. Sora. Well, um, <laughs> exactly. That's my uh, yeah, so that. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, that is the bulk of the like extra stuff. But the main thing, the one that has everyone talking, I think, is that Gen 9 was officially announced. Um and Pokemon Scarlet and Violet is the names of this one. They described it as an open world. It's seemingly taking place in a region inspired by Spain. And the starters include Sprigatito, a grass type cat, Fuecoco, a fire type crocodile, and Quaxley, a water type duck. Ignacio, what are your thoughts on this new Pokemon? So the day is Sunday last week. I don't know if I remember what number date that was. So all there was, I had just woken up. I go mm -hmm. to Twitter. I forgot that there was going to be a Pokemon Presents. I scroll. And then I hit IGN. I get to an IGN post. Where it is the picture that they released of the three starters. Yep. And I'm like, are they talking about a fan game? And so I go into the article. And it says, it's an open world Pokemon game next gen. And I'm like, is this a hoax? Is this a joke? <laughs> what? It, I, I feel like a lot of Nintendo's directs and presentations, they just kind of announce haphazardly. And I feel like as excited as we all get for some of the stuff that they announce in these, I kind of forget about them and that that they're happening until they've already ha ha happened right yeah 
to be to be fair, they were supposed to promote the the direct way more that week, but given Correct. world events, they decided not to do that. Uh, yeah, but yeah. So what do question. I think about it? What do I think yeah. about it? I'm just waiting for the other shoe to drop. I want to know what's the trick here, Game Freak. What are you not telling us? What what's the caveat? What's what's the asterisk here? You said it's open world. It looks like Arceus. The towns are open. What's the trick? What are you not telling us? Yeah, yeah. It's especially because uh, brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl came out immediately followed by Arceus. Now this, yeah. like these, they're putting out a lot of games. Yeah. So putting out a lot before before it happened, uh, I doubted that they were going to re- reveal a new Pokemon game because yeah, we had Brilliant Diamond Shining Pearl, and we had also Arceus, and so most probably we would have three games within one year. So I thought yeah. that that's that was a good reason as to why not to reveal a new generation. But then you have to remember that this also means. A new generation of games means also a new season of the anime. So eventually they do have to re- release a new game, a new generation mm-hmm. of games. And it has been three years since Sword and Shield, which was already three years True. after Sun and Moon. So yeah, it, it, it was time for a new generation. There you go. Yeah, I, I know the pandemic affected a lot of stuff. And I think... Uh... Yeah, we probably would have gotten Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl earlier by probably a long shot, um, if not for Maybe. the pandemic. Um, Maybe. But yeah. Yeah. Releasing worldwide late 2022. Um, yeah. yeah, I'm I'm excited about this. I, I am intrigued by this new direction of describing it as an open world. Uh, I loved Arceus. I thought it was fantastic. It's not without its problems. Mm-hmm. It can get very choppy uh, every now and then. And I doubt it doesn't run particularly I thought it great. will be any better. I thought it will be any better. Yeah. And if that the one is like looked a bit open pretty. zone, like open region, right? And But they, they're describing this as open world. I, I don't yeah. know if that truly means like, okay, is it? all actually an open world here can i like walk into the town without a loading screen or is like each route it like its own open area if that makes yeah, sense in each town its own open that area. remains to be seen they make it sound as yeah you can just walk in and out of towns yeah very openly and then calling sure we'll it straight up an angry. open world i'm inclined to think yeah, they are aiming for an open world game, but like I said, what's the caveat? Where, where, when's the right. other shoe dropping? Right. We need to hear a little bit more, Game Freak. Come yeah. on, Nintendo. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm sure we'll hear more this summer. Uh, but yeah. What do you think about the Pokemon that they showed? Um, I, I l- l- like them so far. I have no issue with them. I'm not super picky when it comes to that stuff, to be honest. Um, I'm a fire starter for la 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 life. So mm-hmm. Fue Coco is my dude. Yep. Uh, I, I'm super excited about that. Uh, but yeah, I, I'm, I, I am interested more so in like the world and the lore and like all that stuff. Like, I want to know what they're doing with that and more of this, like, is this really an open world or not? Like, that is the stuff that I want to know. It's like, how how are you taking these next steps in Pokemon? Because people were kind of debating, is Arceus, like, a, a new main entry in the series or not? And uh, mm. it, I think it can kind of go either way. But here we have a proper, like, this is Gen 9. It is open world. It is... Something who knows what exactly, but it like it seems like they yep. are t- taking steps and things they've learned from Arceus and put that into this one. Yeah, I'm excited on it because, like you said, there's so much of Arceus that we're seeing in this game. You see 
Pokemon roaming around the world. It does mm-hmm. look like the same idea of no, maybe just out in the open throwing a Pokemon and you'll catch pretty much any Pokemon. But it looks kind of like that where it, it feels like the battles themselves will be pretty open. And I said before when we talked about Arceus the other day that I liked the foundation that it was building and what I wanted from the next game was give me gyms, give me, give me a structure of why I have to build up a team. And this seems to be the best of both worlds where it will most probably be the same structure that we all know, but it will have the things that I like, the new things that I like from Arceus, it being more open and it feeling more of a world inhabited by Pokemon. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, besides that, that like announcement trailer, though, there's not really much to go off of, except that it, it, it might be in Spain. It, it looks like it's in Spain. There's mm-hmm. some like Spanish influence uh, in in that as well. So much to be excited about down the road, I think. Yeah, there you go. But let's move on to number two here on the list. This was a interesting one. I feel like Epic, the creators of Fortnite, have bought Bandcamp. Ignacio, are you familiar with Bandcamp? Kinda, kind of, kind of. Yeah, see, I, I'm, I'm familiar with them. I've bought. M- music off of their platform i have some of my own on there uh i wouldn't call myself much of a musician but i do have a tsunami like beat tape uh that i made where i sampled a bunch of shows on uh that were on tsunami and stuff but i I digress so what Um, you're saying is that now epic owns that i'm by extension you (laughs) no they'll never own me fuck the system fuck capitalism right um yeah, so they they dropped this announcement, and this is a weird one. Um, so first, I'll I'll read here from the Epic Games website. Uh, it says, "Today we are thrilled to announce that Bandcamp will be become part of Epic Games. Bandcamp is an online music store and community where fans can discover, connect with, and directly support the independent musicians they love." Fair and open platforms are critical to the future of the creator economy. Epic and Bandcamp share a mission of building the most artist-friendly platform that enables creators to the majority of um, that in that enables creators to keep the majority of their hard-earned money. Bandcamp will play an important role in Epic's vision to build out a creator marketplace ecosystem for content technology games art music and more um and then jumping over to the blog on bandcamp.com their ceo ethan diamond uh wrote this he said I'm excited to announce that Bandcamp is joining Epic Games, who you may know as the makers of Fortnite and Unreal Engine, the champions of a fair and open internet. Bandcamp will keep operating as a standalone marketplace and music community, and I will continue to lead our team. The products and services you depend on aren't going anywhere and will continue to build Bandcamp around our artist first revenue model. Where artists net an average of 82 percent of every sale, you'll still have the same control. You'll still have the same control over how you offer your music. Bandcamp Fridays will continue as planned, and the daily will keep highlighting the diverse, amazing music on the site. However, behind the scenes, we're working with Epic to expand internationally and push development across, uh, push development forward across Bandcamp from basics like our album pages, mobile apps, merch tools, payment system and search and discover discovery features to newer initiatives like our vinyl pressing and live streaming services. 
Nasio, what what did you think when they announced this? Like, what what was going through your mind? Were were you confused? Were you like, ah, yes, I know what this means. There's a clear path. Let's go. When will this stop? When will companies stop gobbling up and governing and eating them? Nom, 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 nom. Getting companies, getting companies. It's all getting smaller and smaller. Yeah. Nah, I have no real opinion on it. It's whatever. <laughs> That's fair. That's yeah. fair. I, 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 feel, I feel like a lot of gamers, like capital G gamers, TM, right? Like, don't really know why this affects them or what this means or all that stuff. Um, and yeah, this is a really weird one. I, I think this yeah. is big news for the music world as services like Spotify have become like the dominant platform to to stream and share music. Bandcamp was basically the last bastion of like independent music. Like you can get all sorts of weird stuff up there. I have my own stuff up up there. Uh, the creators, you can set your own prices, right? There's not like it has to be sold for this much or each song is 99 cents. Um, mm -hmm. It is like I, I can set what I want. I can set it to be free. I can set it to be pay what you want. Um, I can set it to be like a pay what you want with a donation of one dollar, right? Um, and that's for an entire song or an entire album, right? I can sell physical merch and on on this stuff. Like they they have an incredible platform that apparently has been profitable since like 2012, which is like a handful of years after Bandcamp launched, if I'm not mistaken. Which is really cool because Spotify has not been profitable, which is largely how companies work in ge ge yeah. ge general is they they often well, spend a lot more for a longer t t time in hopes to be profitable down the road well they that's because they serve different audiences where sure. spotify goes goes after more of the the big names you will have mm -hmm. your big name artists that you want to watch or listen to on spotify and also you have things like the deals that they make with podcasters and whatever. So that's what Spotify right. is doing. And that, of course, costs more money than, say, Bandcamp now on the other side, where you have more, your smaller independent people where, yeah, they might mm -hmm. not be making much, that much money in there, but also they are not spending that much money in there. They're, to me, it sounds more of a marketplace rather than a store, like sure. I, I would say, comparing it. For, like to yeah. Spotify. So in in an in interesting note, speaking of spot 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 Spotify and the music I I industry, uh, I think it's also important to note that Tencent owns a forty percent stake in Epic, and Tencent. I'm not sure the exact numbers, but I know they also have investments in Spotify as well as most of if not all of the major record labels. Uh, yeah. So in That's terms of Bandcamp being independent, it's still just like, well, it's maybe not as independent as it does I mean, say it is now. I mean, who, who, unfortunately. who knows? Who knows? Uh, if, I mean, if you're speaking about Tencent, throw a rock at any company, big company, chances are Tencent might have some sure. stock in there. Sure. Yeah. So who knows what, if anything, it means for Tencent being involved in Spotify and in Epic to the deal. Yeah. Um, also, in the like music scene, Epic and Apple have been duking it out. And I know that goes for games and payment services and all sorts of stuff. But uh, I, I could see this being a move for Epic to kind of put themselves it, 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 more so as a competitor to Apple. I don't think they're there yet, but it, it, it like, it, especially with 
them talking about uh like hey we want to you know build this ecosystem and marketplace for creators and content and technology and games and art and stuff stuff like that i think that's also what apple kind of has right they have their music catalog they have their game stuff they have all the technology all the, like they have like i i feel like epic games is trying to creep into that space slowly yeah, it, kind of you know in a way yeah i think that this is a move that differ- diversifies more of epic's portfolio or sure. epic right for the most part it has had two sides to them that you have the first first it was their game engine and then also the games that they made but also now you have the epic game store which mm-hmm. is another side to their game to the like the, their their game portfolio but now you're seeing them spread a bit more to a different type of portfolio which is music so i mm-hmm. think and we know this that, is more um a move to diversify yeah, and we know that Unreal has been used a lot m- more in TV and film in the recent yeah, years yeah, yeah, on true. stuff like The Mandalorian. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, so like I, 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 I find that interesting. Mm-hmm. I don't necessarily like it, but I, it, it kind of is what it is. But let's talk yeah. games. In the gaming space, what might this mean? Ignacio, when was the last time you played a rock band? <laughs> rock band specifically, I don't think I've ever played it. I have oh, played wow. guitar, guitar Hero. I don't think I've ever okay. played Rock Band. So Rock Band was made by Harmonix, which is owned yeah. by Epic. Yeah. And uh, apparently one of these senior producers at Harmonix tweeted out uh, that they were very excited to have Bandcamp a part of the Epic family so to speak uh I, I don't like that word but uh um yeah would 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 you be interested in a new rock band or a new something like that we kind of music <laughs> game we like already that? had a new rock band not that long ago which was and I, uh the rock band reboot the oh, one that yeah, came um, out uh, at the same time as the new Guitar Hero. Yeah. I just... I, it, I don't it think that that seems went like, very well. Yeah, it's, it seems like those brands have kind of fallen out of favor. However, I've, I've already spoken to some people that I know that, like, got wind of this that aren't really gig gamers. And they, they are like, yes, I would love a new Guitar Hero. I would love a new Rock Band. Why don't they make those anymore? They were fantastic. Um, and... I don't know. Like I I I don't see them making a new rock band personally, especially because of all the hardware involved, right? They yeah. have to spend all that money yeah. to make that and that's expensive as shit. Um so I I my thoughts went to streaming when I first saw this of like, oh, yeah. hey, one of the biggest issues in the games or just in the like content creator space is DMCAs. Like, we don't mm-hmm. really have great places to go for stream safe music. And a bunch of these g- games use all of this licensed m- music that they can't really, like, make deals with, right? So we see the Guardians of the Galaxy trailer just with no music, just being yeah. silent in the background. And it's awful. It's a terrible experience. Right. Like I when I saw this, my mind went to what if Epic is starting to think about that and building up some kind of library of stream safe music uh, that you can use while you're streaming on Twitch or in your YouTube streams or or even in their their games. Like implement yeah, it sure. in their games. So, they, so that they won't have to be like, you guys have to mute this if you're streaming or do this, right? Here's the stream safe one, right? Just like, hey, we have the licenses to this and we will not DMCA you on this. It will be stream safe. But it is, I think, Epic also has the kind of money as we've seen with 
for Fortnite, right? For them to mm-hmm. get tr- Travis Scott to do c- 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 concerts and this guy to do concerts and that and stuff like that. I think they can get those big name people to maybe start putting some stuff out on Bandcamp and have that be a new platform. And yeah, like you said, yeah, um, put that out as stream safe stuff. And like we, and like we said, they have the Unreal Engine, so maybe they could implement it into that, into the licensing of, of licensing, you know, that engine. Into their music that maybe, videos. Hey, or, yeah, <laughs> that or Stuff also like that too, for, ga- for game developers, just have it as a, hey, here's a library of music that you could put onto your game. Sure, yeah. That counts yeah. With, the, with the Unreal Engine. Exactly. Exactly. So mm-hmm. I I am, am not happy that Bandcamp is now no longer truly independent, but uh, I, I, I think we still have yet to see exactly the effects of this here. So, yeah, who knows? Uh, moving on, though, everyone seems to be stopping sales in Russia. Uh, I'm not really pulling from a particular thing here because this was happening all week. There were multiple things written yeah, from all, all sorts happening. of sites. Yeah. Um, so uh, apparently Microsoft announced that they were stopping all sales of their products and services in Russia. EA initially decided to remove Russian teams from FIFA and NHL games, but have since stopped selling their games and and content, including virtual currency bundles in Russia and Belarus. As long as this conflict continues, CD Projekt Red has similarly pulled GOG.com and its games from sale in Russia and Belarus. Sony has quietly pulled Gran Turismo 7 from sale in Russia. Remedy and a bunch of uh, 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 other studios out there have donated money uh, to help the Ukrainians in need. Uh, And most recently, Activision Blizzard has suspended sales of and in its games in Russia. Um. I, I don't yeah. really have much else to add on on this. Do you, do you have something else to, to mention with this, Ignacio? No, I, I think that it is expected, and I think that yeah. we will see more and more people do this because given the situation, I think that if they are not required to, at least they are compelled to do mm-hmm. something like this in, a, in an attempt to contribute to, to the thing because. The whole idea now is that while there is not a war being waged or that you can wage against Russia being a country other than Ukraine, this is, hey, at least this is something that we can do to provide some support to Ukraine and try to help in a way in the war. Yeah. Does, it, mean, it's, really, it's... does it really work or not? That is up to debate. Like who is it impacting or, or who isn't that is to debate. But yeah. that's the thing that that's the thing that is happening right now to try to help in any way in some way yeah i i i think it's more so to kind of get people in russia who who might be complacent yeah. or on the f- 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 fence on on this like well hey well now i can't play v- video game game and i can't do this and i can't do that and i can't buy the new Microsoft operating system, Windows 12 or whatever it is, uh, right? Like it, it is this kind of I, I don't feel like this is the right term, but like war of attrition, right? Of just like, let's just yeah. do these small things to like, let's just let's just starve them out here on, yeah. on I, this. That's, that's why you do things like uh, sanctions and what yep. I don't know if this council sanctions but the idea is that yeah this is not gonna affect putin or any of his people but yeah it is gonna directly affect the people in russia so the hope is that as more and more of these things happen affects morale yeah it is kind of (laughs) like the image that comes to my head it's like you're strangling or yeah strangling i think 
yeah. more and more in the hope that at some point there is a breaking point where the people will actually do something mm -hmm. to fight the government to make them stop. But the question is, is if that there is a point, if that point exists or where right. is that point where if you choke right, again yeah. with the with the image of choking them, is there a point where you choke them a bit too much that it's not the breaking point, but you're starting to hurt them more than helping? That's, yeah. that's the question. So that's why I say that it is up to debate as to whether or not something like this helps. Yeah. It, it has been discussed a lot recently if it helps yeah. or not but it is a game uh, it is a thing that is happening now so indeed i um, expect to see more people doing this and also yeah, one so. one ironic thing from this is that as you mentioned ea is removing the games if you remember not that many weeks ago we talked about how they were not gonna bring the new sims expansion to russia because mm -hmm. of the content And then they walked back and said that they were gonna bring it to Russia. <laughs> and then now they're, now they're not again. Yeah. Games were coming to Russia. So, yeah, that, that's a bit ironic. Yeah, indeed, for sure. Um, well, yeah, that's, that's kind of all we will say on that. So, let's mm -hmm. move on to our new and notable section. Do you want to take this one or should I? I can take. No, notable one. Do the, cool. the next one too. First up, we have Aztec. First up, we have Aztec for Garden Guts coming to PlayStation 5, Xbox Series consoles, PS4, Xbox One, Switch, and PC on March 10. If you do not remember, Aztec for Garden Guts was a game that was revealed last year on an indie presents by mm -hmm. Nintendo. If you remember, I had it on my Fantasy Creative Click last year. Yep. Uh, but yeah, it got delayed, so it is coming out March 10. Next up, what some would call the Mario Kart killer, potential game <laughs> of the year contender, Chocobo GP is coming to the Nintendo Switch March 10th. I, you I, know what? I, I, I hear that every once in a while, Gino is still going back to Final Fantasy XIV, yeah, well, despite boom, yeah. playing... Elden Ring. I think this might be the one. This is the one. He drops Final Fantasy for, for, yeah. 14 for Chocobo yep. GP. That's it. Yeah. Right here. I mean, mm -hmm. like, like that, he can say, hey, <laughs> it is still Final Fantasy. I still have Chocobos. Yeah, yeah but it's not Final Fantasy 14. So. Uh, uh, another game coming out, not Coming out by coming to a service near you on March 10th, Guardians of the Galaxy, my game of the year last year, is coming to Xbox Game Pass on March 10th. If I'm not mistaken, yes. that's Xbox, PC, and Cloud that day. Cool. That's a great one. Play that game. That it's is good. a great one. Next up, for March 11th, WWE 2K22. The series is back this March 11th, coming to PS5, Xbox Series consoles, PS4, Xbox One, and PC. They took a year off. I think it was only one year off. And they're back. There you go. Wrestling. Wrestling. Next up, we have Grand Theft Auto V is finally making its debut on next-gen consoles for the second time in its lifetime. Coming to PlayStation 4 and Xbox Series consoles this five, March 15th. There's a PS4. Yeah, you, you, you said four. <laughs> PS5, Xbox Series consoles. Again, it already came out. And next gen PS4 some years ago. This is its third generation on March 15th. Wild. Speaking of next gen GTA 5, I didn't put it here, but we got some news as to what you should expect this new version to bring. So I'm pulling up from The Verge where they say there will be graphical touch ups throughout and it will offer three graphic settings a 4K fidelity mode with ray tracing, a competitive. Comparatively, comparatively straight back upscale 4K version, 1080p on Series S, 
performance mode that runs faster on 60 and a performance mode that runs faster at 60 frames per second as well as performance RT mode on PS5 and Series X. There you go. Yep. Also, where is the ray tracing for the PC version? That's all I'm asking. Uh, yes. Halo Infinite Season 2, entitled Lone Wolves, launches May 3rd, 2022. New maps and modes. A new Battle Pass co-op will, co will still be coming Season 2, just not at launch. Yeah. Yeah, so that's... I, I don't know much about that, but uh, yeah, that is kind of one of the big things I think the game is missing, is co-op, uh, yeah. which is... Weird that co-op is coming in season two. It's, it's weird that it's late, but it's coming in season two, which is entitled Lone Wolves. <laughs> yeah. So and also <laughs> there not you go, with the, folks. Not with the launch of season two, but in season two at some point. Yes. Yeah. 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 And if you are a fan of the Resident Evil games, Resident Evil 2 Remake, 3 Remake, and 7 are all getting next-gen upgrades later this year. And from what I've heard, Cal has committed to playing all three games. No, Care to not confirm? really. No. <sighs> Cal, when are you going to play them? Not going to do it. Pretty disappointing. And we also got our PlayStation <laughs> Plus and Games with Gold games for March. First off, for PlayStation Plus, we have Ghost Runner, Ark Survival Evolved, Team Sonic Racing, and as a bonus, Ghost of Tsushima Legends will also be made available for PS Plus. Members. Yeah, so cool. question on that one. If you bought Ghost of Tsushima, was Legends a free upgrade? Free to if download? If I'm not mistaken, Ghost of Tsushima Legends is a part of the proper game. So, okay. so this would cool. be kind of yeah. like G GTA Online, where you can get GTA Online as a separate thing, but it comes with the game. Gotcha. Cool. Because, yeah, I, I went to go put this in my library, and instead it was just like, download the trial. And I was like, I don't, that's not what I, I huh. I was like, maybe, maybe I already have it, and it was a free update, and I just didn't really pay attention because mm. uh, I did not play it. But... Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, cool. Also, as for Ghost Runner, I think it comes with the PS5 version as well. Yes, that that is the PS5 one. Yeah. And games with gold for March, we have The Flames in the Flood, I will work March 1st through the, through the 31st. Street Power Soaker, available March 16th to April 15th. Sacred Fallen Angel, available March 1st to the 15th. And SpongeBob's Truth or Square, available March 16th to 31st. There you go. And the new one notable has been done. I refuse to say what Alan says. <laughs> well, with that, let's go into our lightning round. <laughs> First history for the lightning round, we have Bowie Kotick will no longer be on Coca-Cola's board of directors. Take that, Bobby. Uh, yeah, take that, Bobby. <laughs> I'm guessing this is more of a PR thing than anything for Coca-Cola. I don't know how it will be of any impact so, for yeah. Bowie Kotick. Him and his millions. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, that's a thing that's going to happen to Just that guy. It's just interesting to see more large co co corporations being like, mm, yep, we don't want anything to do with this guy here. Yep. So. Next in story, sticking with Activision, Activision Blizzard failed to hire another woman to the board, which was required by California law enacted in 2019. They had three years to comply, and they did not. Surprisingly, they blamed Microsoft for it. This is ridiculous. I don't know how, but uh, yeah. they had three years and it was like, you know, December 31st, 2021 was the deadline to do all of that. 
Uh, and then they they came out and blamed Microsoft as the reason they didn't know this. Like we wouldn't notice that the Microsoft stuff happened after the deadline. Yep. Yep. <laughs> These guys are idiots. <laughs> Fuck, man. <laughs> like. God. God. And last news story for Activision. Activision Blizzard has been sued for wrong wrongful death by the family of a former employee who had committed suicide and claims sexual harassment was a major factor. Oof. Oof. Another one, indeed. This is a lot. Um, I, I just, I, they, they can't not go a week without putting their foot in their m mouth. Just like, what? Yeah. Oh, yeah. well. Oh, well. Oh, well, indeed. Twitch has updated their policies to stop channels from consistently sharing misinformation both on and off the platform. Yeah, I, th I, yep. I think from what they said is that like it, this really won't affect most people, but they've already yeah. shut a few channels down and it's just a good thing for them to have too. So. Yeah, I mean, it's Twitch. It's not like Twitter or Facebook where people are constantly putting out messages. Uh, you have mostly people playing games, and sure, you have celebrity or personalities playing them. But yeah, I doubt that it is a widespread thing. So, mm -hmm. yeah, it is a good thing to do, but like you said, it will not impact that many people. Uh, next up, we have Cecilia Dan Danastasio Dianastasio. Over at Bloomberg yeah. put out a new article all about Twitch losing several of their top people since early 2022. Susie said that the company lacks strategy and leadership. And as the company scaled, hired workers from big tech companies who were, quote, unwilling to learn what this community was, why it was special, end quote, ultimately leading to Twitch losing sight of what made it special, the creators. Interesting. More issues at Twitch. Um, yep. Kind of makes sense, though. That's, uh, that's just... I, that's what I feel like the conversation has been at Twitch for a long time, that it's been kind of complacent with where it's at. at. It's just stayed yeah. there, and they're not really doing things they, they need to, or they don't, they don't have the right people people to help get those projects off the ground mm -hmm. and stuff like that. And I know there uh, a few months ago, right there, like at that, I guess a year ago now, I didn't think was there, there was start, starting to be a big uh, move to YouTube, a bunch of their creators and stuff. I know L L L Lodwig, who used to be one of the biggest streamers on Twitch, moved over to y y YouTube stuff like that and that's kind yeah. of been the direction that things have been going in no. and finally our final news story here we have ghostwire tokyo which is releasing later this month has changed their pre-order rewards they have added eight additional color variants of the biker outfit being offered so there you go. yeah so they i, I yeah. think they were offering this like special biker outfit uh, but then I think they decided to offer that outfit as an unlockable in the game. So they are changing the pre-order thing. Got to have the bike you get, outfit. You, you, you have to, uh, or not you have to, but you'll, you'll get multiple variations of this thing there. So there Gotta you go. have the biker outfit. Gotta, Gotta have, have the biker outfit. Yep. Good and stuff. that's it for lighting. Cool. Well, Ignacio. Ooh. What are you excited for this week? What are you hoping to get more into? You're just going to be playing more Elden Ring? Is that all? Yeah. Yeah, more Elden Ring. <laughs> <laughs> in the midst of stretching and fist pumping in the air. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but yeah, more Elden Ring. Yeah. Cool, uh, cool, cool, that's cool. what has my attention for the time being. Okay, are you hoping to try and beat it before? Like, are, what, what's, what's the next big big beat game it. you're looking forward to? <laughs> beat it. Uh, I don't know. 
Ghostware Tokyo. It is coming out later this okay. month. So yeah. that's next up. The other game that's coming out this month that I want to play is Kirby, but that's going to not replace Elden Ring. It will probably replace Arceus for me. Okay, gotcha. So are you hoping to beat Elden Ring before you start Kirby? That's what I, what <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Meeting Elden Ring. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, I'm not going to do that. That's impossible. This game is so difficult. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I don't know what okay. meeting Elden Ring looks like. Good stuff, good stuff. Um, well, yeah, I am hoping to finally finish Horizon uh, so that I can get back into Project Triangle Strategy or just tr Triangle sh sh Strategy. Um, yep. But also Tunic is coming out. Not It won't be out this next week, but will be out on the 16th, uh, which is that, God, I, we've been waiting so long for that game they they that one they almost announced like when the switch was announced it feels like it's been a long time uh but it's that like little zelda like but you play as a fox um yeah. little old school zelda like so i'm exci excited about that one though i probably won't get that one right away um because like i said I've, I'll, I'll at the end of this month i'm moving uh into a d d different state i'm moving halfway across the country so uh we'll see what happens with my gaming habits then we'll we'll have to see what we're g gonna do for the podcast because i won't have my computer and all that stuff with me i'll have my laptop so if nothing else i think we could find times to do like an audio only podcast but i'll have to see if Alan can uh, step in and do some of the stuff for the show. So we'll see. We'll keep you guys up to date with all of that stuff. But Ignacio, where can the people find you on the Internet? They can find me on the Internet at Twitter at Ignacio Rojas B. That's I-G-N-A-C-I-O-R-O-J-A-S-B. There you go. And you guys can find me at Yo Kyle Springer on Twitter. If you guys want to stay up to date with all of the stuff that we do here at The Whatnots, we are at The Whatnots on Twitter. So please go like, share, and subscribe. That will help us out a ton. We would appreciate it uh, if you guys could spread the word. That's stuff like that that helps out. Helps out a lot. Um, but yeah, I think that about wraps us up for this week. So we will see you all next week. This has been number 110 of Crossplay. And you have been... Elden Ringed. <laughs> but. Peace.